it's part two for the giant Lego skateboarding dude, which I did last time and we did some tests. It didn't work too badly. We had a couple of crashes, managed to break the servo in its waist, and on the whole, it tends to snake when you drive too fast. So the whole thing is radio controlled. It's got four brushless motors in its wheels, and we're gonna look at those in this episode as well. And there's a number of other improvements to make. Don't forget to check out my channel for lots of other robotics, animatronics, other giant Lego projects, and various other things. And don't forget you can buy my merchandise in the link in the description below, including these t-shirts, mugs, bags, and all sorts of other things. And you you can support my channel through Patreon. And if you don't like Patreon, I also have a YouTube channel membership. So just go ahead and click on that join button right below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move the battery down to give him a lower center of gravity. I thought having all the mass at the top would help him lean to steer and he'd be able to steer really tight, but actually it's made him really unstable. And then we're gonna do something about covering up all these wires. We're gonna give him that Lego brick backpack that he has in the movie. Yes, it's Emmett Brickowski from the Lego movie. That's why he's orange. So I've just made an extension lead and we've used a smaller battery in the leg there because the other one doesn't fit. And then I've got the wires hanging out the back here. We could put a toggle switch on there, that'd be rather good to turn him on and off. But for now I can just connect the battery wires together there and then shove the wires up inside his brick backpack. So now before we go and do anything else, I'm gonna um, stop him falling over. So we're gonna put some stabilizers on there. So I've 3D printed some little wheels and these are actually eight mil internal diameter skate bearings. And I've made Ninja Flex wheels just with those bearings in the hubs. And of course those fit on quite nicely to eight mil studding and we can fix them with a nut either side. So the plan is gonna be to attach a thing like this, it's gonna look a bit weird. Get a piece of studding, stick that on the center of the board and then stick this wheel either side so that hopefully he can't tip over too far and break his hip servo and then we'll replace that. Right, that should do it. Um, at least it'll give me a chance to uh, give it a good test before we smash it to pieces again. So now it's time to actually sort out the steering. So at the moment he just leans to steer and we hope that the board leans enough and he tries to steer with proper skateboard trucks. But the problem is that all the wheels are brushless and they're all locked together. So those brushless motors tend to stay quite well locked together. So we've got a separate motor driver so they can run at different speeds. They're actually all trying to run at the same speed which is gonna resist the steering. So I'm gonna build a system of differential drive. So as we steer him, we read that steering channel from the RC receiver. It makes one set of wheels go faster and the other slower as he steers and when he leans the other way, it does the opposite thing. So we've got an Arduino Pro Mini that's gonna live in his leg here with the radio control receiver. It's got two wires that come in for the steering and throttle channels. And then it's got two lots of two that go out for the two sides. So we've got two ESCs on one and two on the other. And that means we should be able to use that steering channel as a differential to speed up one side and slow down the other side. So I've written some Arduino code which uses interrupts to read those pins. So basically we've got interrupts attached to the two interrupt pins on the Pro Mini which are pins two and three. We've attached that output but we're not using it yet and we've got um, basically these functions here called time it which actually wait for that pin to be triggered and then they start a timer and they return the timer into the main loop. So now if we open a serial plotter and we wiggle the controls a little bit so you should be able to see that that is the accelerator or the throttle and the other one is the steering. So now I can use that data and use the numbers however I want to, and we can make that into a mixer. So now I've added another bit of code which gets the difference from the middle on the steering PWM channel, and it takes 1500 and takes the value away, so we get a positive or negative swing, as 1500 is the middle value. And then basically we've got two out values that finally get written out to the two ESCs for each side of the board. One adds a difference and one takes the difference away. So as long as we wire them the right way round, then we should have uh, one set of wheels go faster and one go slower. So here's the plot. If I press the accelerator there, and that's backwards, and steering is the green line on the bottom, but you'll notice as I steer, 
the accelerator line diverges into two, and those are the two signals, one going one way and one going the other, basically one getting faster and one getting slower. We might have to scale this value depending on how sharply it wants to steer and what drag there is, uh, but we're going to start with that. Right, the humming sound you can hear is the fans um, inside his bat there from all the ESCs. All the electronics is still hanging around here, but I'm just checking everything works. So now if I go and accelerate away, we can hear all the motors running. It's hard to see, but in fact, if I go and steer one way, yeah, we can see these ones are still going and the top ones have actually stopped. So that means it's getting driven by that side more and he's leaning towards us, so that's correct. And the same the other way, hopefully. So hopefully that'll make him steer much better. Now there's no motor braking, so the wheels will still free wheel, but at least one side is getting driven faster. That's right, we've finally given him some facial features and some other details on his body, and also new hair. This hair came off Thingiverse, but I've modelled some new hair, which is a bit more classic Lego minifig and a bit like my own hair. It's not quite Emmett Brukowski, but that'll do, and he looks a lot happier. Well, super glue fixes everything. Super glue and activator sticks almost immediately to PLA, but I thought once his head had fallen off, we might as well leave it off because then it makes him actually much more stable because his head and his hair is quite heavy. But I was pretty glad it worked well on flat ground at least. The steering seems to work now with that differential drive and a little bit of lean, and he can lean, I think, as much as someone on a skateboard. So that's pretty good. But since I was next to a skateboard park, I thought I might as well try and put him on a half pipe. So there we go. Thanks again to Tinyfell for helping me with the filming in this video and the last video, and don't forget to check out that face scanning video we did that was really funny. And if you like the video, then please like it, and don't forget to subscribe for more serious robotics projects and some other giant Lego. Alright, that's all for now.